All right, so let me show you how to use Visual Studio Code with that AI model and the MariaDB MCP server to uh, prototype uh, schemas to talk with your data, this kind of stuff. So I'm going to use this article here. You can uh, go through it if you want to understand how the MCP server works, but in short, just so that you know, in case you, you are new to this, uh, let's say you have a MariaDB server and then you have a client, an application. It could be an application that you are building or it can be something that you are using as a developer, for example, Visual Studio Code. And this client understands this uh, protocol, the MCP protocol, right? And then you put something in the middle of these two, which is the MariaDB MCP server. And now when you have this set up and you can let this LLM know that you as an LLM have access to the MariaDB MCP server. So in case there is a request from the user through, for example, Visual Studio Code that requires some kind of data that lives in the database, you can let me know and I'm going to make that call for you, get the data from the MariaDB server and return it to you so that you can create the final uh, answer for the uh, the customer, right? Because now you get whatever this returned, you get it, and then you can generate this uh, answer back to the to the MCP client, which in turn uh, returns it to the to the user. Okay, it's going to be a bit more clear in a moment. And also, if you want to read all the details of this, uh, you can find uh, those right here. For this video, I want to uh, follow the instructions and maybe show you how to use it. So the first thing we need to do is clone this repository and um, we are going to uh, open that in uh, Visual Studio Code. Next, we need to create a new .n file with this. I'm not going to use the embedding uh, cap capabilities of the MCP server, so I'm just going to copy this. Let's create a new .n file. There you go. Now we need to create, uh, actually we need to open the docker compose file and make sure that the connection credentials match the ones in your NV file, which they should because I made no modifications right to, to them. So database demo user is user and password is password123, should be the same we have here, user, password123 and demo. Okay, so that's ready. Uh, and just so that you know, we have two services, right? So this is going to start a MariaDB server. That's your database. If you have one, then you don't need any of this part. And also maybe you don't need this part either. I need it because I don't have any MariaDB database running right now on my computer. Uh, so I will need one. And the other service is the MariaDB MCP server, which is another process, another uh, server, right? Uh, which is uh, what I was showing you in the in the diagram before. Okay, now we can docker compose up all this stuff. What happened there? All right. Let me maximize this. And this is going to download images and then it's going to build the actual uh, MCP server, the MariaDB MCP server, which is the official one. And it's uh, implemented, as you can see, in uh, Python, right? So it installs the dependencies that it that it needs, and then it uh, builds builds this application, and it tries tries to uh, run it as well, and connect to whatever we configured in the uh, .env file. So that's what's uh, happening right now. Meanwhile, maybe I can. It actually is going to to finish pretty soon. Let's keep an eye on it. Done. So I can check the logs with this command to see that everything was uh, initialized uh, correctly. It says application startup complete, so it seems like it's uh, up and running on this URL. Okay. All right, so it's uh, 9001 is the uh, uh, port. But let's continue with instructions here. So because we're using Visual Studio Code, so we are going to find a uh, option there to add a new MCP server. So we are going to use that. And then we need to select uh, HTTP, introduce this URL. So I'm going to copy it, give it a name. 
for example, MariaDB MCP and choose between making the MCP server available to your current or all workspaces. Okay, so let's do that. Add MCP server uh, HTTP. This is the URL. Keep in mind that you have this part here, all right? And then I'm going to name this MariaDB MCP. And I want it for this workspace only. This is also going to ask if you trust the server. This is the official MariaDB uh, server, MCP server, so you can trust it. And it's asking if you want to trust it and run it as well. So let's say yes. If for some reason it doesn't run, or you uh, didn't run this, uh, uh, you maybe click the wrong option, you'll find a run button right here, right? Along other, uh, alongside and other options, like right? stop it, restart it, yeah, and so forth. Okay. So that part is ready. Let's continue here. Now we can open the uh, chat in Visual Studio Code and make sure it's in agent mode, which is right here. Um, and I already have it on agent mode. Very good. Now we need some kind of data, some kind of database, and I have some files somewhere. Uh, let me go here to load this file. So I'm connecting to that database, which is running locally with the user and password123 and the demo database. And I'm going to send the SQL file, which contains uh, some uh, information that's interesting and should be here. Uh, if you're wondering what is this uh, Doom guy doing here, I can actually show you. It's uh, an extension for Visual Studio Code. Just because maybe you are curious about it. Let's say you're coding a... Uh, let me move these maybe uh, over here. If you are coding, uh, I don't know, a Python uh, program, and then you uh, introduce a typo. You see the reaction here, right? Or the state of the of the character. So that's what's uh, that's what this uh, extension does. It's pretty cool. And as you are solving the uh, errors, then it recovers and you are get uh, back to a healthy state. Okay, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Let's close it. That's actually I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna move uh, myself over there. Uh, if I can find it here, right now I'm kind of the, the the character, the Doom character. Also, this will prevent me from maybe hiding something important that you need to, to see. All right. Anyway, let's create a connection to the MariaDB server. User and password123. Let me check that. Correct. And demo is the name of the database. Connect, success, it's right here. And we have a bunch of tables. That's what I wanted to, to show you, right? So it has uh, like uh, continents, there's data in it as well. Countries, all right, um, languages, what else, regions, etc. Okay. Now let's say we want to speak or to talk with our data, we want to no facts about these uh, database, so we can we can do it right here in the chat uh, panel. So let's say we we want to know how many uh, tables are there in the uh, demo database. Let's see if this works. As you can see, it's running the MariaDB MCP server. Uh, if you are doing this for the first time, then it's going to ask you if you want to run this. And then you can select also, there's a, a drop down list that you can select, for example, yeah, always allow to, to run this if you want to do that, or you can just do it manually, right? Uh, so it contains nine tables. Yes, it does. So it, it connected to the database to check that. Now you can ask things about the data, like uh, what country? Uh, has the highest number of languages. And it's going to do that. It's going to figure out a way to tell the MCP server to run a query. And the query is created by the LLM, right? But the LLM cannot execute 
queries by itself. It cannot connect to a database. It needs the MCP server to do that. So that's what's happening and it returns the result. So United States with 12 languages, actually uh, a tie for the highest number of languages with uh, uh, 12 languages each. And it's five countries, United States, Russia, China, Canada, and India. Interesting. Um, how many uh, languages in uh, Colombia, where I'm from? Let's see. So it's going to do the same. It's going to try to connect to database through the MCP server and run a SQL query. And it tells me that there are five languages and so forth, right? You can ask uh, more, more facts about these uh, uh, data and the pretty complex queries sometimes. Um, but uh, you can expose these or you can consume these uh, MCP server from your own applications, right? From, from your Python applications or uh, Java applications. Uh, or any other language that, that has libraries to to create MCP clients. So your application would become like what Visual Studio is to me right now. It's a client, right? But uh, you can offer that functionality through your application and let your users mm, interact with your data. Now, uh, we are using it here as a, uh, in a development environment. So the user that I created for this database, uh, which was user with the password, password123, it has permissions to modify the database. You don't want to do that with, if you are offering this functionality from your application, right? You might want to create a specialized database user in MariaDB and use that. And that when you give the, the permissions, the privileges that you want, uh, so, you can, so for example, they cannot ask the, uh, uh, the LLM to go ahead and delete data or, or create data that they shouldn't. Uh, but in our case, we are using these as a, uh, development tool, right, to, for example, bypass code an application, and we are uh, doing a bottom-up uh, kind of uh, design approach where the most important things are going to be data, and you want to make sure that the uh, tables and the relationship between them are, like, uh, perfect, are the best for what you are planning to, to, um, to implement, so you start from there, and then you build on top of that with uh, frameworks and, and whatnot. So, for example, we can tell it to create a table for storing users, including a name, email, password, let's say just that. And it has the ability to request the MCP server to do that through this command. Or, well, this is actually getting table schema. Let's see if there are more. It's executing the SQL. Of course, it's executing uh, create table statement somehow. And you now it's checking what it has done, probably because it wants to verify this. Let's see if it actually created the user's table. It's right here, right? And it's empty. So let's uh, ask it to, for example, insert some data. So insert some demo users. I'm going to let it do whatever it wants to do. I mean, while we can check that it created the table with name, email, and password, but also it added a couple of columns here for maybe uh, temporal data, which is not a bad idea at all. And also an ID um, surrogate key in our database. Not, not a bad idea at all. Now let me actually refresh every one second maybe so we can see that it has inserted the data. That's pretty cool, right? We can also update, like uh, um, change... Uh, John Doe's email to John at test.com. So it's going to be uh, that one. And it should update the data. There you go. Just change that. That's pretty cool, right? And we didn't have to write any SQL queries, nothing. Um, the difference with using something like, for example, ChatGPT or something like that is that you can ask it to create the SQL queries and then you will have to come here and run it here, right? Like uh, whatever the, the chat generated, you have to type it there. I don't know why this is not staying there. Anyway, you get the idea, right? So you have to execute that uh, manually. The user uh, does it for you and then you can prototype things. Mm. You can investigate things and, uh, and you can uh, basically even uh, by code a an, an application like I said from the from the database schema starting with the database schema then later you can ask 
DLM to even uh, create a front end for this or or a or an API through REST, um, etc. So uh, that's what I want to show you. Uh, remember to check this uh, article. Follow the instructions connected to your own database, to your own data, and, and let me know what uh, uh, what you find, if you find it useful, or if there are any new uh, features that you would like to see in the MariaDB MCP server. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>